So if you've got it working this far, this data that we're saving to the database now displays on screen here. Well, this data displays here because I've saved comics by the time I open the app. You saw from beta testing it that if you are then to save um, a brand new comic, it won't automatically update. It said saved comic, but when I go to view comic, it doesn't appear until I refresh the app. That's normal so far because it did exactly that. There's no indication anywhere that after saving a comic, refresh the table. Only when we run the app does it refresh the table because we've got the command right here. In my case, line 469, refresh, you know, prepare the comic, show the table. So when the app loads up, it does what we told it to. So we're going to need to add that command in a few different places so that we know that the table does load up properly. One is at the moment that we, that we save the comic. So that line actually, I'm going to comment it out. You can comment that as uh, a quick way to confirm table is displayed. But we actually want show comic prep to happen when we save a comic. Ultimately, when we delete a comic, when we edit a comic, which we're not there yet, but also at the moment that the person logs in. So at the <clears throat> moment, there's two places where we should add this to. When we save the comic, let's go find our function where, we've, where we save a comic. Let's see, it's not so far from here. Prep comic, save comic. Right here, um, we've got if else, we've got db dot put with all of the stuff from before dot put, and then we have else, meaning the success. We successfully saved a comic. Pop up on screen. We saved the comic. Reset the um, reset the form so they can save a new comic. And one more thing. Refresh the table to display the latest comic, which is just calling the name of our function, show comics prep. Now on the, name of, on the names of these, we have show comics table, show comics prep. It sort of seems like, well, why aren't we using comics table? Comics table is based on prep. So maybe we could think of better names for those that make, might make more sense. But show comics prep is the one that gets the data from the database, then passes the data to show comics table. Show comics table actually creates the table and displays it on screen. But comics table is based on prep. So this is what will show the comic. We also need to do that <coughs> when the user logs in. So we have that whole we have that whole is logged in thing uh, or or when they log in automatically or when they are logged in so actually two more places let's uh, when they log in let's find our function log in let's see prep comic get first word log out log in In function log in, we have our if else checking that the user does exist and checking that their passwords do match or else they don't. And we have here to do update on screen the latest data. So we're pretty smart there. We gave ourselves a note to remind ourselves. So that comment then is replaced with the name of the function to prepare to show the comics. Put the person's name at the bottom of the screen, 
prepare and display the list of comics, set who is logged in, initialize the database, and move us to move us to the screen. So actually looking at it in the order here, actually we probably should have that after the initialization of the database. So before we actually move us to the, the other page. So where we had our to do, it was a little too high logically. Uh, we need to assign who is logged in, put their email into local storage. We need to initialize the database, so load up the database of the correct person. Then display the latest table with their comics, and then move us from PG Welcome to PG Home. Let's say after initializing database refresh the table of comics. Is that line? Well, that is for when they go from PG Welcome to PG Home. If they never logged out, there is a there is a conditional statement that checks. Are they logged in? Are they logged out? If they're logged in, automatically take us to PG, PG Home. So inside of our very first if else conditional statement, right here, this whole logged in user checker. If no one is logged in, do nothing, or else someone is logged in. We initialize the database, we write their name at the bottom, we move us to PG Home. Well, that's another spot there to have function comics prep. After loading the person's database, oops, uh, that's a note, a comment. After loading the person's database, refresh the table on screen. So now we've got three places where it should refresh the table. When you save a brand new comic, we forgot to write the note, we'll do that right now. But when you save the comic, refresh the table. When you log in, if you've been logged out, refresh the table. If you never logged out, Welcome back, refresh the table. So now there should always be the latest version of the table on screen. What's that? In mine, it's at about line 98. It's inside of the if else statement, which we noted as logged in user checker in the else. I did write the note. So yeah, after we um, save the comic, refresh the table to display the latest comics. So the table at the moment now, when you run this, should then update itself. is what I have so far. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got ten comics. I'm going to save one more. I'm saving a brand new comic. 
save that. It tells me I save the comic. When I go view the comics, new comic. I didn't have to manually refresh. That function prep comics purpose partly is to refresh the table. The last thing we'll do for the day before our lab is I want to make these buttons clickable so that when I click on Zman number 33, I get the pop-up that fill, fill, shows me the rest of the info. So now uh, when we test this, this is now we're going to start to make sure we've got stuff in the publisher and the notes. I haven't been saving anything there because it's optional. So notice that when you don't fill in a box, it'll say undefined. We'll, of course, set it up that you will be able to fill something after the fact when we edit data. We're not there yet, but at the moment, in order for us to edit, I want to be able to click a comic. It'll pop up to display all of the data that is there. Any that data that is missing, I want to be able to fill it in. Anything I misspelled, I want to fill it in. I want to be able to go in and change that. Capitalize it, change it, whatever. I want to add the publisher info that I didn't the first time. Of course, then we want, I don't actually have that comic. I want to delete that comic. So that info screen will be very valuable to show you all the info, but also a way to edit what exists and a way to delete what exists. So we'll set ourselves up on that, and then we'll, we'll end for the day. Well, that, uh, that pop-up of info screen is going to be set up in HTML. In the HTML document, we're going to create our pop-up screen with all of the fields we're going to display. We'll get back to the HTML file, index.html. So we've got PG welcome, PG save, we've got PG view, PG view comics. After PG View Comics on mine, it starts at about line 200. I've got PG View Comics, and then it ends. And I've got the template. Remember, we made that template as a way to create a brand new screen quickly. So I'm going to copy the template screen, and we're going to change it a little bit so that we can view comics. So I'm going to copy from about 227 to 250. I'm going to copy that whole start template screen, paste it above itself. So now I've got start view comics info screen. This template file that I copied, it's my view comics info screen that ends over here. Yes. Take the original template and copy it right above itself. And we're going to change a few things about it. OK, so this copy is still based on the template. Very importantly, first of all, it needs a unique ID. <coughs> we're going to call this pop view comics info. It's not going to be like a full page. It's going to behave like a pop-up. So I've prefixed it with pop instead of PG, PG for page. This will be a, a kind of a pop-up. Data role is still page. Header, data role header, same thing. Data position fixed, same thing. Now uh, template here. Instead of it saying template, it'll say comic info. It'll be the full info of this comic. I don't need the nav bar because it's going to be a pop-up. So remove completely the nav bar. The header now is just simplified to be the comic info. All 
I also don't want a footer. Pop-ups often don't have a footer, so I'm going to eliminate that. So in my view comics info, in my pop view comics info, I have a header, which I've simplified. I have an article. Make sure it's got the ID of pop view comics, not template. This article What I'm going to have in the article, uh, let's remove everything in the article. We don't need that H2 because the H1 will suffice. But inside of this article, we'll do something similar to displaying the table. In the table, PG View Comics, we had a div. That div then, we dynamically wrote HTML into it. So we're going to need a div in here as well. Div with a unique identifier. Div view comics info. We had uh, some just basic placeholder text before, but instead of Instead of um, replacing completely the placeholder text, so right when we had comics go here, that got replaced by the dynamically generated in information to display the comic. Instead of doing that, I want to take what already exists and add to it. So we'll break that div apart, and we're going to create paragraphs here that display the fields associated with the comic name, number, year, publisher, notes, we haven't done it yet but we might as well add it here, barcode, just to have a placeholder for it. And then an image. We haven't done the image yet either, so we will set it to source equals nothing, because that'll be dynamically generated. And while we're here, we'll create some buttons. To delete the comic or edit the comic. So in this div, we are going to populate these paragraphs based on the data from the database. Uh, we've already displayed number and year, but here we will display it uh, along with the year, publisher, notes, barcode, image eventually. Button to delete, button to edit the particular comic, which needs an ID, btn delete comic, and then an ID for the edit button, id btn edit comic.
Okay, so uh, this pop-up will appear. All these fields will be populated. Save your HTML. Let's jump back to index.js. The idea is that we're going to hit any of these. We're going to click any of these little bubbles and have the pop-up appear to show you the rest of the data of that particular row. So we need to create event listeners. On the event of clicking any of these little speech bubbles, open up the pop-up and then populate the pop-up with the particular row of info. So in our JavaScript file, let's go to the section where we've got all of our event listeners at the end of the document. We've got our event listener on submitting the sign-up form, on submitting the login form, on the generic clicking the button to log out, on the submit form, on the submit button for saving comic. Okay, well, next. Event listener. To show the info pop up. Let's make some notes here. When we've had um, Actually, um, well, we've got uh, these these named objects. Uh, we need that for for those pop-ups. But in the notes here, if we were to have as an example var dollar l. Um, show comics is equal to dollar selector pound um, I'll show comics info this is just a comment but we, we've seen this before which is create an object based on one element or node in HTML. We've seen that. Well, if we have var dollar l's show comics info equals dollar dot l show comics info. Okay, we, we haven't we haven't quite done that. We've done that one time. Uh, but here the dot is a class, right? Created an object based on one node in HTML, based on an ID. This one over here, create an object based on many nodes in HTML, based on many classes. That's what we did when we created that row in the loop. Over and over, we created rows of data. And each icon at the end had some class name. I don't think it was that, but this is just an example. So there's a difference there. The problem is that the rows of icons or comics don't exist at runtime. At the moment that we run the code, uh, it's put onto the device. Those classes don't exist because the 
the compiler sees all of the HTML and puts all of these tags and such into memory, it creates the app. As opposed to the JavaScript, it puts all of this into the memory, but it doesn't you know, run these commands unless instructed to. So this, where we create a row, where we created the icon, where we attach the class, that doesn't exist at runtime. So we're not able to create these these um, these objects at runtime. We can, however, look at the div that does exist at the moment the program runs, and then look at the objects, the rows that get created after the fact. So we'll first take into account the div that does exist at runtime, and then the dynamically generated dynamically generated rows with icons and classes. So you see, uh, when it all runs in the HTML, there there is no row 1 or 2 or 70. Not until the JavaScript runs. And by that time, if we were to try to make an object of those rows, we would get an error. It would say, this row doesn't exist. But the div surrounding it does. So we need... Um, dollar L div show comics table that does exist at the moment we run the program L div show comics table comes from at the beginning of our code up here. At the beginning of our code, we're saying, let's create a variable L div show comics table. It's based on the, the div that does exist at the moment of runtime under view comic. So we're going to use that dot on we've had over here. On the event of a submit, do stuff. On the event of a generic click, do stuff. On the event of a click, function show comics info. This is saying, technically, anywhere that you click on the table, run the function. That, that's not what I want. I meant I'm clicking on the particular speech bubble of a particular row. So we're going to add something new here. After the click, comma, quotes, dot, the class, btn, show, comics, info, comma. This is how we get around the issue of it. Those buttons don't exist at runtime. We're saying, first look at the table. Then look for elements that have a class up here. Once that's clicked, run a function. So this has an extra argument, where before we're saying, the thing that we're clicking on, run the function. The thing that we're clicking on, run the function. No, now we're looking at a thing inside of a thing, a node inside of a node. This, uh, this button here has a, has a class which is inside of a table. So 
now we're saying click on this node which is inside of this node then run a function after clicking the button inside the table run the function Okay, well, this is going to work that any of those speech bubbles we click on will run the function to make the pop-up happen. But this is not programmed yet to know which row we mean. So we mean to then further pass an argument into the function, meaning this row that we clicked on. So in the parentheses, we're then going to say dollar, the jQuery selector again. So it's going to look weird. We're going to have three ending parentheses here, saying this. If I highlight it here, Do a jQuery selector without quotes, this. And that means this, this thing that I clicked on. I'm selecting this thing that I clicked on. I'm passing that object that I clicked on into the function show comics info. So there's its parentheses. That parenthesis is then from this on click dollar parentheses. This means this one that I clicked on. Literally, this one that I clicked on, this speech bubble. I further mean, remember, we attach that metadata, data dash ID. The data dash ID includes the ID information, which is found at the beginning of the row. So be right after this, dot parent with its own parentheses. This right here means that it's um, the actual bubble we clicked. We mean the parents. We mean the whole row. So technically here, we're passing in the data of the whole row into this function. All of the data in that row, uh, but more importantly, the data dash ID. So there's still three closing parentheses here. Well, in order for this to work, that's the logic of it, but it's not syntactically correct. The syntax isn't right, isn't correct yet. Uh, we saw here that if we run the function, if we want to run a function without any, without any parameters, we just name the function. If we want to run a function that has a parameter or an argument, which is what we're doing here, it's, all, it's a complex one, it's all of this. All of this is being passed into the function. Just like over here, we're passing the event object into the function, but we had to do it with an anonymous function running the name function after a submit. So after clicking the speech bubble inside of the table, run a function, passing this data into it, which we then need to write the full syntax of it. So we need to wrap around curly braces around right here, semicolon here, like we've got it here. The function, parentheses, semicolon, that curly brace, that curly brace, all of this, semicolon. Well, that curly brace is attached to function parentheses. So before the comma here, the anonymous function with its own parentheses, in this case we don't actually put anything into that parentheses. Hmm. 
It's pretty long right there and, and complex than what we've done before, and I'll reiterate it when we do the lecture next time too. But the very last thing that we'll wrap up is, okay, if the whole point of this is we click one of these speech bubbles to make a pop-up happen. The pop-up is going to happen inside of this function. Let's define this function briefly and just add the usual console log, and then when we test this, we'll, we'll see that we get a reaction from clicking on the, on the bubble. So if we've got that event listener, we back up to where we've got our definitions of our functions. We'll say here define function to display the comic info pop-up. Function fn show comics info, uh, the one we wrote right here. Uh, yep, function show comics info. This comic. console log is running and then console log this comic it's not going to make the pop-up it's only going to make stuff in the console it'll at least say this function is running and um, it'll show you some raw data of that particular row of, a, of comic info. Because we're saying down here, I can't show it all at once, but we're saying down here, pass in, all of this is basically saying pass in this row. I clicked on this bubble, capture the data of this row, pass it to the function. And so right here we would display it in the console. Let me just see how it looks on mine, and then we'll wrap up for the day. So let's see here, console, view comic, I'll click my first row. Function show comic info is running. It has a particular row of data. If you open that up, you can see it in here somewhere. It's like in a very interesting way. But I clicked on this comic over here, and the row of data of that comic, TR, comes in here. And if you kind of explore inside of here, you should see the data, Beast Boy 1993, with that row of data, Beast Boy code, and all of that. So based on which of these I click, I'll click on Zman. I click on that. The function runs. It's a particular row. I open up that row. I open up the zero with item. And then if I poke around in here, I should see under the inner HTML property, I see that row is made out of that cell, etc. And the text in that cell is that and that and that. So depending on which one I click on, it'll say, yeah, you clicked on that row. That's the whole point of this really detailed event listener, which I'll put into two lines here just for readability. <clears throat> Look at a div with a certain ID. Find the bubble with that class after it gets clicked. Run an anonymous function so that we can run a named function so that we can mean pass the data of the row into the function and then we get that console output. And I'll go over this again a little bit next time as we're out of time. But uh, here is how we set it up so that it knows which row do we mean. Because we have 5 comics, 10 comics, 50 comics. This data, uh, this event listener here knows, well, which row do you mean? It's this row, the parent, which is the whole, the whole row, and then the function runs. 
So let me put my code into the folder up to this point. If it worked for you, great. If not, we'll do a little lab time. Uh, but at this point here, uh, we're starting to set ourselves up to uh, display the full info of the comic, which will then allow us to um, view the comic info, delete the comic in question, or edit the comic. Now that'll be <coughs> that'll be next time.